Hello everyone, welcome to Eat, Play, Heal. Today we have my dear friend. He's an actor, model, entrepreneur, and a race car driver, and also a father. Let's all welcome, Fabio Ide. Yay! Hello, Fabio. Hi! Hello, everybody. Hello, Carla. Kamustakana. How are you, my dear friend? It's been ages. It's you and Miss Ellen. Of course, Ellen, um, ladies and gentlemen, is his uh, partner and he's also <laughs> my friend who looks like Barbie. Come on, Fabio. How happy are you? <laughs> no, I'm very happy. She's amazing. Everybody, everybody teases that the Barbie and Ken. So <laughs> we're getting used to right. the... Uh, so far, we're just trying to, you know, complement each other psychologically, physically, just being there for one another and just trying to, you know, to keep sane during these crazy days that we're living now. But so far, we're okay. She's, she's working hard every day from home, slowly getting there with the tapings restarting again. Uh, um, and hopefully, hopefully we will rise again uh, as soon as possible, Diba. Right? I hope so. I yeah. hope so. Tell me about um, how you keep yourself sane, since you mentioned it. Uh, basically, lately, I've been trying to work out. I've been working out every morning when I wake up. That's the first thing I do. I have a nice breakfast. I eat my acai berries. That's a, I, I think I, I mentioned to you about my, my new company, about the yes. acai berries that I've been importing from Brazil. Mm -hmm. So I just have a really nice breakfast. I try to get updated with the news. And then I do a really nice workout, uh, basically, to start the day, start the day burning calories and, you know, making myself uh, active and my mind also active. Um, and then uh, now, now, it, now we're starting to, to be able to move a, a bit more compared to before, right? Before, during the lockdown, I was just really working out in the morning and then having lunch. In the afternoon, I was reading books, uh, listening to podcasts, uh, trying to spend time with my daughter as much as I could, watching a lot of movies. Uh, and then if I could, uh, uh, maybe like do some cardio as well here in the building and then dinner and then that's it. Watch another movie and then sleep. But now... Uh, thank God things are starting to slowly open up again. So we've been more flexible to do tapings uh, out of town inside the bubble. Uh, still doing my workouts, but now I get to run outside in the, in, the, in the street. I love doing my jogs in the afternoon. These are the things that keep me sane. I love reading good books and, uh, and spending time with my daughter. Because before I, I couldn't really spend so much time with her because she doesn't live with me. But now with this open damage, sometimes she just come here. She stay here for three, four days straight. And uh, it's been great. It's been, it's been really nice. Tell me about your daughter. What's her name? Her name is Dani. Well, Dani is her nickname, right? Her name is Danielle Micaela Ide. That's her full name. But we call her Dani. She's seven years old. And what does she want to be when she grows up? The other day, I asked her the same question because a lot of people, a lot of casters, they've been messaging me like, Sir Fabio, can you bring your daughter for a casting, for an audition? And sometimes, you know, because she, she can be very playful, she can be very funny, she's a smart kid, but she can be, she's, very, uh, um, she's very comfortable with the people she's around, the people she knows. But then when you put her in front of the camera, she got completely like shy, she doesn't move, she wants to go, she doesn't want to like really do that. And the other day I asked her, I said, do you, do you plan to, you know, like maybe be, do a model? Do you, wanna, do you want me to bring to these auditions and this and that? And she said, no, daddy, I want to be an, I want to be an artist, but I want to be a different kind of artist. I want to be a painter. She loves painting and drawings. She loves art. So I was like, wow, that's actually cool as well. You know, like as long, as long as you do whatever you love, I won't force you to do anything you don't want. Don't worry about it. You have my support to whatever you, you would like to do in life. But I was pretty cool. I even asked her, I said, hey, do you want me to do a, to, to pay you a course? You know, you can start early because then you can really see if this is really what you like, if this is what you want. And of course, the, 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 the earlier you start, the, the better you become, right? So right. It's, just, it's just really hard now with this whole pandemic situation, you know, like I feel bad for them. For them, I mean, for the kids out there, including my daughter, they're just at home, you know, they can't go to the school anymore, hang out with other kids. They're always doing like the Zoom classes in front of their iPad. So it's quite, it's quite frustrating, right, for, for them compared to what we had before, right? We could really go to the, the schools and universities. So yeah, it's been tough for them. What was it like for you in Brazil when you were growing up? Oh, it was awesome. Like, um, I mean, I, I had the best parents in the world. Like uh, I'm very close to my dad. I used, since I was young, I used to play basketball. My dad was my coach. 
So he's my biggest inspiration in life, my idol who has taught me everything, you know, the good values, the, the good education. Um, and it was amazing. I grew up with two sisters. My parents up to now, they're still together, still holding hands in the street. You know, they're very sweet, very cute. They, they taught us all the good values, you know, everything that we need to, to learn. And in Brazil, despite of being a very dangerous country, it, it can be quite tough in the big city in Sao Paulo. But uh, we had everything, you know, like we're very family oriented. We, we grow up with a lot of love, a lot of opportunities, a lot of support from our parents. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do with Danny, you know, like I just want to give her exactly what I had when I was growing up. Uh, you know, just teaching her the right values, good education. And uh, I want her to be kind, uh, uh, um, thoughtful, being a, being a sweet kid, you know, like that's, that's very important for me. And I think she's getting there. She's, she's very, she's amazing. She's awesome. When you spoke about Danny, your smile is different as well. Oh, really? Yeah. I, yes, it is. It is. She, she's my little one, you know, like as they say, uh, uh, blood is thicker than water, right? So when, when it's like, I mean, she changed my life completely, like from the moment she was born, you know, like my my principles, my my priorities in life, everything changed when you have a kid, despite of being a single father, you know, uh, me and the mother are still very good friends and we're just trying to work as a team to give the best for Danny. Yes. And um, it's just, yeah, it's very important, especially nowadays, you know, so... It just it just amazed me, and 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 the the fact that I see her like growing beautifully, and and despite of this whole situation, you know, like she's a tough kid, you know, like because like I mentioned a while ago, it's not easy for them, you know, like the way this this whole thing that's happening now in the world, and and, and the way how she's handling. It. So when I speak about her, I speak very highly because she's she's awesome. She's only seven years old, and when you speak to her, hopefully one day you get to meet her. She's so mature for her age. Sometimes I even get a little scared. I'm like, wait, I think she's too mature already. No, 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 it's fine. It's like, you know, she's just really like, you can talk to her about like crazy stuff, like about really like adult stuff. And she, she will talk to you back and you'll be like, oh my God, like, it's insane. <laughs> Do you remember anything like, you know, right off the bat that um, something that she said to you that shocked you? Um, let me think. There was there was one time I think she was even younger she was like five years old and I don't remember exactly what happened but I, I was really quite upset um, but I was just like you know still happy trying to hang out with her and play and but she could feel it and, and it was weird because during the time she still had like this little kitchen that I, I bought for her before when she was a kid you know like she can pretend to make a tea like to make coffee and I remember she just looked at me and she said like. Daddy, are you sad? And I was actually sad really. I was a little down. I forgot for, for what reason. But but then I look. Uh, I said, "Why?" She said, "I don't know. You look you look sad." But don't worry. I'm gonna make a tea for you. Don't worry. So she went to her little her little kitchen that she had in the in the corner of the house, and she was just pretending to make a tea, you know, like. And then she came back here, Daddy. Here, Daddy. Have some tea. Relax. Relax. And I was like, oh. I was like, oh my God! Like how? I mean, it was funny how she could really feel it, and she was quite young. I think she was only five years old. Plus the 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 cuteness of like being like, oh, I'm gonna make you coffee. But I don't know. It was it was. I was like, oh my God! I was like really surprised. You know, like she was so young and she could really feel me. Yeah, there was that connection of father and daughter, you know, it was, it was beautiful. It was, it was nice. I was like, I just remember like I hug her, I squish her. I was like, Oh my God, I love you so much. It was, it was nice. It was beautiful. How do you instill the healthy lifestyle? For me? With you and your daughter, with you and your dad. Well, I've been, I've been telling her because ever since I told you, my dad was a basketball player. He's still a basketball player up to now. So since I was really young, my dad was really encouraging us, me and my sisters to do sports. So my oh, sister yeah. did volleyball. My my younger sister did the uh, gymnastic Olympics. I, I I grew up playing basketball, football, and of course, for my whole week, for my whole life up to now, I still play basketball, not for a team, but I play I play like in Urda. I play twice a week, and 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 I think sport taught me so much in life. You know, it teaches you how to lose, how to win, uh, uh, teamwork, uh, working hard for you to become better, and I really associate all those. Also, uh, um, all those learnings from sports to my life. And, and that's something that my dad uh, uh, gave it to me. My dad taught me since I was really young. And this is something that I'm trying to show Danny now, you know, and I've been really trying to connect her to sports. I'm really trying to make her, you know, I already put her in ballet. 
uh, swimming. Uh, right before the pandemic, they were doing those uh, um, those clinics with like the football players who used to yes. who are good friends of mine. And I used to play to play football here before as well for a couple of years. Mm. So we went there. Like she was playing football, like kicking the ball. I wanted to learn how to how to how to work as a team, you know. And something that I learned about my daughter as well is sometimes she has a hard time accepting uh, defeat. Even if you play chess or if you play any game, like when I win, she gets really upset. And I and I've been trying to show her that it's okay to lose. You know, one time you win. You know, you work hard, you learn, you pay attention to what's happening, and then the next one you're gonna get it. You know, you won't win all the time, but um, as long as you learn how to how to how to fight for the things you want, how to become better, how to pay attention, how to learn. And uh, this is something that I've been trying to teach her through sports, because that's something that my parents did with me, especially my dad. And uh, that's something that I'm really trying to show Danny slowly, you know, like, and I think so far she's doing okay. She's, she's doing ballet. She, she was doing swimming, but now they had to stop because of the pandemic. She started doing football uh, uh, classes. So I think slowly she's going to get there. Yeah. Your energy is so magnetic. And um, thank you. How do you compartmentalize, and how do you how do you like look like you are just so chill? Every time <laughs> well, I see you, that's how you are. Yeah, that's true. I, well, I I just like I don't know. I have my moments, to be honest. You know, I like you said, I do so many different kinds of things. I sometimes I'm acting, sometimes I'm modeling, sometimes I'm I'm racing, sometimes I'm playing. I, I'm I'm in I'm in the party, like hosting people. I just really try to. To balance it out everything you know i know my limits as well there was there was a time that I, i almost got burned out because i was just doing too many things at the same time and you know me i, I have this formal fear uh, feeling where i want to be everywhere i don't want to miss anything it's a birthday party it's an event i want to support everybody but sometimes you realize that uh, it's hard you just can't please everyone you know and, and and sometimes you can really get burned out and i almost got burned out uh, um Until I finally realized, hey, I think that's enough. You know, I really have to choose my priorities. I have to choose what's good. What's uh, uh, what is my priority here? What is is this important for what? Like, uh, I just really had to because sometimes it was just too much. So as long as uh, for for uh, for a time I was doing it because I just really had to. It was just like my schedule, and I was really enjoying. It. I was like I enjoyed waking up early and going going home late and doing all this kind of stuff and you're like wow that's what we used to do <laughs> no exactly right it, exactly. It's a nice, that's it's, why we are friends <laughs> it, it's a nice feeling you know when you when you feel like you're you're, you're, you're being so productive and you're getting so much stuff right. done but sometimes in the end of the day you realize it's not healthy right it's not uh You know, we, we only live once, but at the same time, sometimes you should be more concerned about my, your health. And I, and I started to get more concerned about, about, about my health and I started to choose to choose the, my battles, you know. And I think that helped me a lot to really uh, uh, select the things that I really, I really had to do and uh, uh, to really fix my schedule properly in terms of uh, work and uh, fun and, uh, yeah. and, you know, supporting friends and all, other stuff especially in our community, right? You know, we have so many people we know and, and, and I'm the kind of guy who always throw events and stuff. And, and I really expect people sometimes to support me, but I realize I can't expect that if I don't support them as well, you know? So I have this mentality where I wanted to be everywhere. I don't want to let down, I don't want to let down any of my friends. And for a while it was, it was fine. But then after a while I was like, oh my God, I was going from my, from Rev. I was going to taping from taping. I was going straight to Rev. And then for Rev, I was going straight to my racing Clark. I was like, no, this is getting a little out of control. So I had to like. That is crazy. Yeah, I got to, really, Kai, got to, you know, I have some crazy stories. I can, I can tell you next so, time. But uh, it's yeah. like. How how can you do that? It's like you're speedy going to that, it's going one thing to the other. But um, you have time to breathe. Yeah, I I, I had time to in the car. <laughs> that's in between one one schedule and another. That's the time I breathe in the car, I relax. Sometimes I bring extra clothes, perfume. My driver sometimes, oh my god, I feel bad for him as well. Sometimes he's like two days super puyat. I'm like. No, that's that's dangerous, you know. Like it's not really. What did you not... realize about yourself? Because that was pre-pandemic, right? Yeah. So right now that we're experiencing the pandemic, what did you realize about yourself? Did you discover anything? Yeah, I discovered that I'm really actually enjoying being alone. I'm enjoying being, you know, I'm enjoying the the the, 
being in a quiet uh, environment. I'm enjoying spending more time with myself because like, like I said to you, most of the things I do, it's always around people, gathers, events, uh, uh, tapings, like uh, racing, sports. But this whole time, I've, I've been spending a lot of time with myself and I think I've been... I've been enjoying it, you know, and I've been trying, I've been, how do, how do I put it? Uh, how do I say it? Um, I'm appreciating more, you know, that the, this time, this, this pandemic time, because before I was always looking for music, for party, for events, for, but now being in a quiet place, sometimes just watching a movie, sometimes just listening to a podcast or reading a book. I'm just feeling like so energized as well. And I feel, I feel like, I'm giving more time for myself, not just trying to please others, but myself, right? Because sometimes we forget to do that. We do so many things for other people, but then what are we doing for ourselves, right? So I think this, this time was good as well to, to wake up a little bit and, and see my priorities and, and see the things that are really matters for me right now, especially in terms of health. Uh, sometimes you could be making good money, but at the same time, like your health is like, oh my God, what's the, what's the point of having, you know, like uh, sometimes good money to do this and that, but then inside you, you're like dying, you know, like, so I think this whole time was really good. It was really good for me to put my mind in the right uh, spot, uh, my, my heart. And, you know, I'm still, I still think a lot about my family. I haven't seen them in three years. This is the only thing that still affects me a little bit because I really want to go back to Brazil. Like when I can, uh, every time I go back, I really energize myself, you know, like a big hug in my mom and smelling the, the smell in my old room that I grew up and seeing my, my Lola and some other friends um yeah hopefully hopefully by the end of the year yeah i super miss that what is your message to other fathers out there it's very easy to be a father but it's very hard to be a daddy so i encourage all the fathers out there to not just be a father because father is easy you can just put a kid in the world and that that's being a father but i encourage everyone to be a dad you know to spend as much time as you can with your loved ones your kids uh, teaching them the right values, um, sharing all the love, you know, like, you know, every single second is important, especially these times. Uh, and never forget to show them how much you love them. And, uh, you know, through gestures, through actions, through words, uh, but just, just enjoying them because they grow fast. And uh, I think this moment now with the little ones is just so beautiful. And it's something that you're going to, you guys going to carry for the rest of your life. So just enjoy every second. Uh, stay safe and uh, happy Father's Day. That is so beautiful, Fabio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm loving this side of yours. I have not seen it. And we've been friends for some I know, for right? That's true. Time. You've never seen this other side of me. That's true. The way that I can feel the joy that you have with Danny. Okay, congrats on the show and uh, let me know uh, once once we can do part two or once I, I can watch as well. I have so many questions to okay. ask you. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Oh my God, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This is Carla from Eat, Play, Heal.